Hey everyone, it's your Sally Coach, and today we will be doing our fourth lesson of Code Busters, Cryptorhythms. Now, there are many different types of cryptorhythms that may appear on your test, but we'll only be going over addition and subtraction cryptorhythms for today. So, let's get started. Alright, so getting started with our lesson, a cryptorhythm is pretty much an equation full of variables instead of numbers. Each of these variables represent a different number to create a code that the cipher is asking you for. This makes it an alphanumeric cipher with four different operations, which are multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Even though there are different operations, you will only be seeing subtraction and addition cryptorhythms in modern tests. Cryptorhythms on most tests are around 200 to 500 points, while also being special bonus. When you solve a cryptorhythm, you usually stick to aristocrating your way through the problem instead of actually solving the cryptorhythm. We will go over what this really means later in the video and do an example in a different one. You also don't need to be solving the entire cipher, and you can instead just solve for the text it's asking you for since that is what gets you your points. This means that you don't need to put in a number for each of the letters, and you can simply just solve through it instead. So getting with the cipher, there are a few patterns that you need to memorize to do well with cryptorhythms. Now these are the patterns that you're only going to use for addition and you're going to learn different patterns you need to memorize for subtraction. So in this first pattern, we see that we have the letters P, A, and U in a triangle position. Whenever you see this pattern, you will always have P value to a 9, and we know that this is going to be 9 because we have an A in the front only being able to be a 1, and a U followed it by it only being able to be a 0. We know this is true when we look at the column ahead of it and having it to carry over. Since we established P is 9, the 1 gets carried over from the column ahead of it, and now you have P, which is 9, plus 1, equaling to 10. This proves how A is equal to 1 and U is now equal to 0. Now, if we had P as any other number, such as 8, and the column ahead of it carrying over, 8 plus 1 would not equal a two-digit number, therefore making it so that P has to be 9, to go for 9 plus 1 equaling to 10, therefore making P is 9, A is 1, and U equaling to 0. In this next pattern, we have H on the left in its singular column, and then in the column in front of it, we have three letters in that column. When the pattern is laid out like this, we can solve for H being 1 all the time. When we look at the column highlighted, we can substitute the S or any other letter in this column to be as high as possible. In this pattern, we can make it so that s is 9 and have s plus s, or 9 plus 9, equal to 18. Now this makes it so that h is equal to 1, and then even if we had the column in front of the column highlighted carrying over, then we would still get 9 plus 9 plus 1 equaling to 19. This does not equal 20, meaning that h has to be equal to 1, and we know that no number can ever start with 0 in the answer. Now, before we move on to the next slide, I just want to make sure that the first letter in this bottom row of letters cannot be a zero because then it would not be a number. So this means that S in the second example cannot equal three or some number similar to that because then it would make H equal to zero. Therefore, going against our rule that no number can ever start with zero. So this doesn't just apply for the bottom row. This applies for any single number that you see in a cryptorhythm. And if it starts with a zero, then you have either made a mistake or the test makers have made a mistake. So if a number starts with zero, then it's just not a number. Make sure to remember that before you start any cryptorhythm you do. Continuing with the patterns you need to memorize, there are more you need to know for subtraction cryptorhythms instead. Starting with the pattern on the left, we are going to see that there is only one placeholder in the first column. We can see that C is going to be equal to 1 now due to the regrouping method. We, if we see the answer to the cryptorhythm, there's no placeholder under the C, which means that when we regroup from the C, the new value needs to be 0. If the C was 2 instead, then we would have a 1 left over in this column for the answer. If the C was 9 instead, then we would have an 8 left over in this column. This lets us know that 1 is the only number that would work to regroup and be left over with 0 when we get the answer. Now with the second pattern, we can see the last column holding the same number twice. Since both of these are the same exact number, we know that if you subtract a number by itself, it equals 0. So if this pattern is seen, we can confidently say that b is equal to 0. Now these patterns I just covered only apply to subtraction cryptorhythms, so make sure you do not use this on any addition problems when you're doing a cryptorhythm. Wrapping up our lesson today, I want to go over how to get all of your points and solve a cryptorhythm. As you solve one of these ciphers, you will have certain letters mapping to certain numbers. 
For example, in our subtraction cryptism here, we would have C mapping to 1 and fill in our letter based on that. For example, in this addition cryptism we have right here, we would have P is equal to 9, A is equal to 1, and U is equal to 0. Whenever we have a number matched to a letter, we would put the letter that is mapped to the number and solve the cryptorhythm that way. This is going to be the end of the video, and before you leave, make sure to watch the upcoming video on practice problems along with cryptorhythms. There's going to be one based solely on addition practice problems for cryptorhythms, and one based solely on subtraction. The next video will teach you how to solve cryptorhythm step by step so that you can learn it efficiently and learn all of the steps to the cipher. Thank you so much for listening, and make sure to subscribe.